well. What's up everyone, back from the craziest holiday of a lifetime. We've come a long way since Irish discos. Actually, in fact, a really long way. I'm using the flamethrower for dramatic effect. We made a home alive. Surprisingly, shout out to the Amsterdam police who almost got us killed. Two weeks ago, myself and the lads from college embarked on one of the greatest journeys of our lives. Within 48 hours, we traveled across six different cities, all in the name of charity, Aware Ireland. We went from Dublin to Manchester to London to Paris to Amsterdam, and finally to Brussels, which was our final stop. That was, it was a race. It was a race across time. This was probably one of the craziest adventures I've ever been on. One of the greatest challenges, you could say. Almost as difficult as McDonald's for 24 hours. And, uh, yeah, I started feeling. You can't wait, man. I feel since this morning. <laughs> I don't know, I was already fine. <laughs> But in all seriousness, the Quest DCU was all done in aid of a charity, Aware Ireland, a charity which is deeply special to me, which is uh, one to do with mental health. It's a charity that's been operating for over 35 years and they do a lot of great work, such as counselling and uh, special consultations for people who are struggling. Ireland actually spends uh, the most out of any EU country on mental health every year. It actually takes up 8.2 billion euros a year. So, so yeah, any effort is good and it's gonna help someone who is struggling through a hard time, which, you know, can happen to some people, so. As well as that 18.5% of people in Ireland have said that they've struggled with mental health issues in the past. So yeah, it, it is, it, it's a pretty pressing issue, in my opinion, and I'm glad that we got to play a part helping this in, in some ways, you know. It just means that we have played a part in helping uh, someone else overcome this battle, you know, so, I mean, that's good. Basically how it works is is that we raise money before we leave for Wear Ireland and we get this through fundraisers. We generate some money from people we know, people we don't know, friends, family, whatever, and we raise a certain threshold. And if we raise that threshold, we're allowed to participate in what's called the quest. How it works is you leave Dublin one morning, you have to get through numerous cities with absolutely no cash, no money, no nothing. So essentially the old name was Beg, Borrow, Steal because you literally do have to beg, borrow and steal your way to the finish line. 25 different teams racing to the finish line. They have to go through four cities of minimum. City in the UK, two cities in Europe, and then the final destination in Brussels, which is the finish line. The first team to get there gets 600 Magaloons, so it's a, it's a pretty... <laughs> yeah. So to clarify, the quest has nothing to do with actual Aware Ireland. Like, that fundraising was done before the quest started, and like that was, that's separate, you know what I mean? We, we don't touch that. That money goes into the charity and you know, whatever. The other, the money that we raise on the trip, it goes towards us getting to Brussels. So getting through the different cities, getting through, uh, getting train tickets. If if you buy train tickets, which which we did not do much of, became a uh, pretty cool top five position, which uh, we were pretty happy about. Given that we f***ed up majorly in one city, but we, we will, we'll get to that. So, if you do enjoy this content, make sure to like, comment, just subscribe. That's all you need to do. Uh, we're trying to build this channel up into something. We're trying to build a, a channel, essentially, so. <laughs> I know a lot of people, uh, especially people my age, just kind of recreationally watch the videos. and like, oh yeah, it was good, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, did you, did you subscribe? No. So yeah, it actually does help me out a lot. We're trying to hit 1250 by the end of the year. Initially, I said 500 for the year, and we smashed that, so. And then I said a thousand, so we might as well round it off to 1250 because why not? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, do all of those things. So, let's get into the quest. Well, after leaving DCU, we had to solve a riddle which led us to the Jameson Distillery, and that's where we met Podge Henry, who still smelt of chicken mac nuggets. We got some baseball caps there and some other merchandise. They actually sponsored the quest, so it wasn't really much of a surprise that that was our first location. We got a photo there. Then we had to solve a second riddle, which led us to the Facebook scent. And then after this, we had to decide which UK destination we were going to head to. So we had a couple of choices. We could have went to London, Birmingham, uh, Edinburgh. But we actually decided to go to Manchester, uh, mainly because in the short term, the flights were actually the cheapest on the day and for uh, priority booking, if that makes sense. So we decided to go to Manchester, 
but this would eventually lead to other problems which we'll get to. We got a taxi from the Facebook center to the airport, which we paid for using challenge money, a 25 euro challenge, which we would later do in the airport itself, which is to pull a pint. The woman working at the bar pretty much ripped into Luke because the Guinness was, well, looked like shit. After this, we fundraised some more around the airport with our bucket. It actually proved quite successful. We got about 100 euro in the airport. Airport security told us multiple times he can't do it, but, but we really had no other choice because we need the money, so we did it anyway. The money that was used to cover the Manchester flights was pre-arranged that uh, we had like uh, work sponsors lined up and stuff, so they actually bought us the tickets and they were just ready to buy on the day. Once we got into the plane, we asked the air stewards could we fundraise through the announcer. Very nicely, they said yes. They allowed us to do it so for the first time in my life i got in an airplane and announced something it was uh, it's a pretty cool moment we raised about 150 euros plus uh just on that flight alone which was astounding it was crazy how much we raised in it it settled us up really well for at least the next uh, day in the competition when we got to the airport we exchanged the money and uh, into sterling because obviously we're in manchester we got a train from manchester airport to the etihad stadium where we got our our photo which was our uk challenge and once we did that uh, we had a bit of a problem in our hands. Essentially, the problem that we had was that when we actually looked up flights out of Manchester, uh, they were proving to be really expensive. So we would have been spending maybe £135 each uh, to get a flight, which we just could not afford. So we made the pretty big decision to actually sneak onto a train from Manchester to London, which was a three hour, two and a half hour long, three hour train. Uh, with no tickets. This is probably one of the most nerve-wracking train rides of my entire life. There was ticket collectors coming up and down all the time, so hiding in toilets was pretty much what saved us. Once we got onto the bus, we slept for the night there. It was the weirdest bus experience I've ever had in my life. For example, there was this one guy who kept waking up every couple of hours from his nightmare and just screaming. Once we got to Paris, uh, we went to the Eiffel Tower to do our second challenge. We snuck onto another metro. Uh, at this point, I think we're sneaking onto everything. There's <laughs> there's no chance we we're paying for anything. We also completed another challenge in Paris, which was to sit through an entire mass, so we did that. The challenge there was to get someone to kiss you, which proved really hard because, uh, one, nobody would talk to us. There was a lot of people around there just selling stuff, so whenever we approached people, they just literally just would not talk to us at all. Eventually, this one woman uh, agreed to do it. It was a kiss on the cheek, it was awkward. When the husband came over, he's like, what, what's going on? I, we literally just were like, all right, see you later, and walked away. After this, we went back to Gare du Nord, which is one of the uh, most famous, uh, busiest train stations in Europe. We planned to sneak onto a train there from Paris to Amsterdam, but it turns out when we got there, that all the trains were full, so we couldn't even do that. And we were considering just going straight to Brussels because there was trains going from Paris to Brussels, obviously, and we had the money. We kind of copped on a bit and decided, no, we're gonna finish this out properly. We got a bus from Paris to Amsterdam, which ironically actually stopped in Brussels, so we could have just got off. Uh, no, we went the whole way to Amsterdam. Once we got there, it was 6 a.m. There was a second bus, which we could afford at 8 a.m. It was an express bus from Amsterdam to Brussels and it was gonna cost 10 euros each. So we were like, we have to get that. And that was at 8 a.m. We went from the bus station into Amsterdam Central. We did the challenges. We were in Amsterdam for a half an hour. It was such a waste. <laughs> The whole Amsterdam experience ended in a bit of a chase because we were coming down the escalator after sneaking onto the metros and we were doing the whole uh, jumping under barriers stuff. This is like our 10th time doing it, so we got very comfortable at it. We were coming down the escalator. Uh, we saw some police waiting by the escalator. We didn't really have much of a choice. So uh, we just hopped in behind some other people as they tagged off and walked through. They saw what we were doing. They pointed at us, started walking towards us. We absolutely bombed it. And they started chasing after us and like literally it was it was crazy like <laughs> back to the bus station got that bus from amsterdam to brussels we arrived into brussels at about 9 a.m went to the final checkpoint we got a photo we finished out the competition and it was uh it was a very satisfying feeling i have to say and yeah, all the money that we had left over, we were going to donate back to Aware Ireland. Uh, so I think there's about uh, 40, 50 quid in there. Um, and yeah, that's what we're gonna do. This is what we've left over. We're gonna give this all back to Aware. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously we had our debit cards back and all our normal stuff so it was pretty much a holiday at this point there was a huge after party after that night 
uh, all the teams showed up in an Irish pub. And we had a great night with some uh, some Dutch people as well. So it was happening. Uh, the holiday was good too. Got to see a lot of Brussels. Went to the uh, Atomica. We went to an Anderlecht game. And uh, yeah, the rest of the holiday was, was fairly chill. I think the main takeaway from this whole event is that yeah. we we never gave up, you know, and that's just the way it is. That's why we were so surprised, like, the, when we got there, we were like, when we got told that that's, like, we came in the top five, I was like, wow, like, we, we didn't think we had done that well, do you know what I mean? But it actually just turned out that the other teams, which we thought were ahead of us, actually just given up, do you know, so, <laughs> you know, I, I, like, I, I won't lie, like, I'm pretty proud of that, like, that we, like, we had to take risks, like, we had to have some balls and do stuff that we weren't comfortable with, like, no one's comfortable comfortable with getting chased by the Dutch police. Nobody's comfortable jumping over barriers in a, in a train station. It's something that I think we were all very proud of when we finished, that we had actually had the resilience to just keep powering forward and actually make it, you know? So even when there was lots of setbacks and times we could have given up, but we're like, nah, like we're gonna keep going. That's a message to, to anyone out there, you know, if you're in anything, like if you're if you're struggling in school, in sports, you you lost your last race, you, you lost your fight. If you're going through life and just you, you can't figure out like what it is you want to do, there's a lot of beauty in resilience. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of audacity in perseverance. You know, like break breaking mold and just going going for it. You know what I mean? It's what put us in such a good position for the quest. It's what will put you in a good position for life. It's just taking risks and going for it. You know. So, but yeah, that's. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. So yeah, I think I'm I'm out for this week. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, yeah, stay safe. Donate this Christmas. Well, that's pretty much it for me. So bye bye.